some kind of, what's, what's going on? What are you looking for? A wrist. Something's down in my wrist. What? It's that metal or something in it. Huh? It's something burning in my wrist. It's burning? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> it's all good. It's all metal in there. It's what? It's all metal. You had metal put in there? Yeah, it's all it's metal. It's disappearing. Good. That's what I want. Why, why was the metal in there? I shattered all you, these bones. Yeah. I, I feel. And you shattered the bones. They put metal in. Yeah, they, it crushed them all. It's, it's all dissolving. We're seeing things dissolve tonight. Those rods are dissolved. If she went back for x-rays, they're not there. His metal's not there. That's perfect. That's not a healing. That's a sign and a wonder. My back's burning now. Your back's burning. Yeah. I had surgery there too. He had surgery there too with metal. Your name! What's going on with your hand? It's burning. It's, it's turning red. That wasn't like that before. Uh -uh. It's all right. It's all right. It's just healing. He's getting a hold of this. Don't you shock me again. Shock you again. Yeah, you sent electricity all the way through my head. My head's burning. Your head's burning. Yeah. My ears burning. His ears are burning. We got a hard man of God up here. This might be final Holy Ghost. Come on, you got it, John. Look at this. Get the camera on him right here. See this? This is the manifestation of being set free. You don't always have to get set free from demons, okay, and spirits. You get set free from pain. He wants to do a new thing in you, right? This is amazing right here. I, I don't mean to take a lot of time, but this guy really is pressing in for the, the whole pond of rose here. Pick him up. Pick him up. Amazing. It's getting better. Everything's getting better. I'm just tingling and burning. My head is tingling all over. And by the way, this ear was messed up. It's not. You can hear. What's the matter with this crowd? Come on. Come on. Come on. And you got healed that night. All that stuff left your yes, body. Yes, it did. I come down here, my wife, I brought my wife to be healed. Yeah. Instead, she pushed me up here. And you healed, God healed me. Yeah. But she was praying for me to get healed and tricked me into getting up here. <laughs> but anyway, I, I slept at night. I get good sleep at night now, and I wasn't getting no sleep. I had to set up to go to sleep. I don't have to do that no more. Come on. Come on. It has had to change your life. It has. I mean, look, my wife don't have to put up with me too much no more. You believe, you're she a believer. She just says go to bed, and that's what I do. <laughs> Quit snoring in that chair and go to bed. 
So now I don't snore in the chair. I just go to bed at 9 o'clock. It's a miracle. I'm, I'm telling you, it, 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 it's a blessing to me. When you sit and you can't breathe, if you lay down and you got to sit back up real fast to catch your breath. here and any of you here there's always people in an audience like this that doubt it that don't believe it don't come to me go to him I double dare you to go to this guy right here that's where you settle this because he felt the electric he felt the fire this guy got the whole burrito right here I tell you come on he he, he got See, and I mean, this is something that maybe we grow into, some of us. Maybe it's your season to say, I got to see for myself. I know when I was slain in 1962 for the first time as a boy in the Catherine Kuhlman meeting, I couldn't get up. It was so heavy, I could, it was pinned to a marble floor. And I thought I died. I thought I'm, I'm as dead, but I can't be dead because I... You know, and I looked up and I saw her and I thought, if I'm dead, she came with me. And, <laughs> you know, and I, when I got up, I went, I went home healed. And I said to my grandmother, I said, you know, I, this is amazing. I said, but I want, I want what I felt again. She said, well, just be happy that you're healed. Celebrate that the cancer's gone. I said, okay, that, here's, where I, here's where I was at that time. I'm glad the cancer's gone. I'm glad I'm going to live, but I want that again. Genesis 26, 18 tells us Isaac dug again the wells of Abraham. In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the Spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call, to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. We're about to take you face to face with history. Welcome back to Revival Radio TV. This is our next installment with a very special guest, Billy Burke. Thank you, Billy, hey, for being Gene. back oh, this so week, good to staying be here. over. Let's get right into it. Yes, sir. I've got a question. Mm -hmm. And you talked about Catherine, and I was remembering of something mm -hmm. she said. Now, I've been wanting to ask you this is Catherine said, and I've heard other ministers I respect say, mm -hmm. You'll never know what this cost me. Correct. What does that mean? Or what do you the think? The little that bit means? that I know, I don't, and here again, I don't want to pretend I knew Catherine. Sure. I mean, of course I did, but I, there's been so much conversation about her, too much that, that would make her feel uncomfortable. She tried to hide from that. So for her to hear her name mentioned so much today probably would bother her extremely. And I don't want to pretend, as I said, did I know her? Yes. Was I with her a little bit? Yes. Um, do I remember everything? Probably not. Uh, but when you get to that question, um, and I don't know if you've ever read the autobiography by Jamie Buckingham. Okay, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, I heard a man once say, it's not what you give up for your wife that demonstrates your love. It's not what you give her. It's what you give up for her. Mm. I never forgot that. And I think that's what Catherine, I didn't think, I never asked her that because that sure. was a mysterious question. But in her mind, I believe that she felt that she gave up something enormous, something regular. And it, I think in her mind, she gave something up that broke. Was that a marriage? Was that a, I don't know. Could be something. But I think sometimes Jesus gave up heaven. We forget that. Oh, that's good. See, he gave up perfection to climb into a mortal body. Right. So we know what he gave, but we forget what he gave up. Did, did Billy Burke feel the same way? You feel like you had to give up? You never know what I had to give up for this? I, f I felt like, um, 
give up? No, I felt like, uh, I, 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 my story's pretty different. I mean, I was really in such rebellion uh, through my teenage years. Uh, she, Catherine reached out to help me. I said no directly to her. I don't want to do this. I'm not ready for this. Um, you know, it was either through Maggie or through her. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to do this. I mean, between you and I, I didn't sure. want to be in the. I felt I was, I have given no choice. And um, so my story changes whenever I think I was 19. Yeah, I was 19 years old, and some facts happened around my younger brother, only brother that I had, and uh, there was some real. Without getting in, if you ever want to do a story there, that is a remarkable story. But he was killed on a motorcycle. And that's whenever I lost, he was a better son, better to my mother. He was way more obedient. He was a great kid. And I was the rebel, rebel one. And um, going the other way, didn't want to do this. And when he was killed, and I didn't have any answer for that, uh, I really came apart. I really, I just didn't want to live. And that's when she reached out to me, Catherine, through Maggie, you know. And I remember that, I remember the phone call. My, Maggie had called my grandmother and my grandmother's on the phone. And she said, Billy, she said, Catherine wants to know if you'll meet her this Sunday in Youngstown. I said, no, I am not going. My grandmother says, why he would love to meet Catherine <laughs> this Sunday. I said, he is telling me that he can't wait. He's looking forward to it. <laughs> That's right. yeah. yeah, I mean, she really, she really got you. She man. just, tr she betrayed me. <laughs> yeah, right there. She was my Benedict Arnold, right That's there. Right. You know, and uh, when she hung up, she says, "You have to do this. You have to do this." I said, "I'm not ready for this. Why does everybody want me to do this?" She said, "Because you must do this." So that's my journey there. So in my my journey to here is. A life was given to get my attention. Mm. A very painful, that was so rearranging emotionally and mentally for me to know that the reason, or a big reason that I sit here, that God couldn't get my attention mm. on a regular basis. So this loss, he didn't cause that, he used that. And um, so what Catherine, what she means by, you know, I, I know the place, the very place that I died. I, know, I don't know. I mean, again, she, she was a very unique person, but so is, so is everybody. You're unique. Yes, I Kenneth am. Copeland's <laughs> amazing. You know, I mean, glory, sure. everybody. And I try to learn from everybody. And because um, the short time that we're here, whether it's a short 70 years or a short 80 years, it's short. It's a vapor, you know, and... Um, what you do in that amount of time with what you know, what you've seen uh, is, is a heavy responsibility, you know, to be, and to do it with conviction. Right. To do it with conviction, you know, and to take no prisoners, to, to leave nothing on the field. Um, that's why I admire this place so much, and that's why I'm not shocked that God's calling it a capital, because it, there's nobody that I know here in leadership that hasn't drank that cup, oh, that's right. you know? What did Jesus say? Can you want to roll with me in power and sit at my right hand if you drank my cup? And mo I, I haven't seen everybody. I don't know everybody here, but sure. those that I've met, probably is the, <clears throat> what I admire, a quality I admire the most is that they paid a price to be who they are. They've fended off public opinion, oh, peers, right. come through their own battles, their faith is proven, their lives are proven. I mean, it's, it's a pretty remarkable place. Yeah. So for God to call it a capital, and here's a place where you can come, and, and you can count on the light being on here, you know, the way the flame was at the prayer tower in right. Tulsa. Right. You know, I, I believe there's a light here that's on that says we are in business. Yeah. We're in the preaching business. We're in the miracle business. You know, we're in the restoration, and this is 24-7 and soon to be. So that's what I, I, I'm excited about, just to see how this unfolds. Yeah. How does all of this, what I saw, I mean, I mean, 
this is what I'm so serious about. I saw it, Gene Bailey, I saw it. So whether it happens today, tomorrow, or how's that unfold? So that's what I'm curious about, and I get excited about it. How does, how does God unfold the dream? Watching that in slow motion. So, because what's it say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? Faithful is he who calleth you, who also will, will perform it. Will do it, perform it. Yeah, but the, the urgency, mm -hmm. I hear a different urgency in you, even from a year ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is. I, I, I believe we're in, in such a... Uh, a battle for the souls of people. I, 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 I do believe the 5G that's about technology. I do believe it's going to make it so easy for people to turn to darkness. Right. Uh, no, that's, that's, I, I do believe we have generations of a youth culture that don't know which way to go, you know. And as you see, most of, a lot of these voices, Billy Graham's voice has been removed recently. Reinhardt, you know, right. Kenneth E. Hagen, we know, and on and on. These voices are being removed, and now we have the voices that are here. And it's not about, it's not about who's the biggest, who has the biggest building, who draws the most crowds, who sees the most miracles. It's just about people. It's about people. It's about these people in these meetings. Like when I was in this meeting this past weekend, this guy flew in from England. He said, I've come 5,000 miles. He had such bad, severe Parkinson's, just all boom, shaken. I came 5,000 miles and I just, I thought, oh God, you can't let him go back this way. And 10 years ago, maybe even sooner than that, I don't know that I would have felt that, mm. you know, but it's like, oh God, you got to do something with this man. He just spent money on, on a plane fare. And, and yet you got the people that line the wheelchairs. Right. The, the seemingly impossible cases of people that, you know, and that are crying out for someone to take their job serious. For someone to believe that he's the same yesterday, today. And forever. To make it harder to just close every meeting with just a prayer. Mm. There's, there's, there's people that are, you know, their veins are shrinking from diabetes. That's what diabetes does. It just shrinks the blood flow into your arteries where you have to amputate or you go blind. Or, and there's people just saying, hurry, somebody can, because they can't get it themselves. I, I don't know that, I couldn't get mine myself. Jesus couldn't carry his cross by himself. You know, and, and, and there's these people that and I don't know, I, I'm just talking, so I don't have the, all the answers for this, believe me. But there's people out there that need help. They need Gene Bailey, they need Billy Burke, they need whoever to take our job so serious that when we say that word revival, we embody everything that that word means. It's true. Because they're suffering. Amen. They're medicated, they're, I, I don't get to make that many hospital calls, but I just made one this past week. One of our elders in Tampa, his wife was in. It was after hours. It was like, I'm thinking 10 or 10.30. She was having complications and he called me. He said, would you? I said, I'm gonna do more than that. I just felt compelled. I'm, so I took Melanie, we jumped in and we just drove to the hospital in Tampa. I hadn't been in a hospital in quite a while, quite a while. And walked into those hallways as I was praying for her, the lady next to her, the curtain was there, and I could just hear her crying out for help. Would you, would you come over here? Would you put your hands on me? Would you touch me? And I thought, oh God, there's people here. We don't have enough people. We need an army. That's right. We need an army. That Somebody, right. we, ha, do we hear that cry? And I think sometimes we, as leaders, get so caught up in our own world we forget it's about people and not a schedule. And I do, I know I do. I get, I get my schedule and I gotta catch a plane and, and oh Lord, you know, and, and you gotta, well, you gotta get this promotion, not that PR, right? and yes and okay to that. And so I think sometimes all that it takes just to get to one person, he knows that, he knows that. Um, 
we just have to stay on top of this, that this is about people. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I do see people that lose track of that. Right. And they come to me like there's this secret um, fast track, you know, to the anointing. And I just said, you know, hey, you know, there was a day whenever I didn't see one person go under the power. There was a day whenever I thought I never would, you know. And they said, well, how did you, what did you do? I said, I walked out on the stage in a named city outside of Pittsburgh. And I said, I just said to everybody, you know, we're going to have a great meeting tonight. And they all fell out. The whole place fell out. And I thought, that's my lesson on that. I had no control over that. Right. And uh, they said, wow. They said, so, I said, so walk with them. Stay with them, talk to them, you know, stay, hang close. You know, read Revelation 3.20. What's that mean? He sups with you and you with him. Not a religious conversation, but a love requires love talk. Love talk's different than any kind of talk. Right. You know, pillow talk is different than public pulpit talk. Sure. You know, and so, you know, you love Jesus, or are you in love with Jesus? You love people, but are you in love? So it's a re-examining of, of where your strength comes from, you know, and, you know, and we all get caught up, like I said, in, in um, you know, wanting this to happen in our church or want this to happen in my ministry. I'm not here to say who's paying a price and who's not. That's not my job. You know, you, you pray for as many people as you can, but when those people walk away, that life you live matters. It matters what you think. Frequencies come from your thoughts. Right. You know, I mean, there's a frequency in the Holy Ghost that is just, I mean, when, P, when Peter and the angel came out of prison, he didn't have to speak to the gate. He didn't have to That's pray. Right. He didn't have to speak. But the frequency of the anointing he carried just opened those doors. You know, so there's a frequency that can be tapped into um, that's available, I think, to whosoever. I think you carry what you cultivate. You don't carry what you visit. You don't carry what you want. You carry what you cultivate. That's the name of my new book, by the way. Oh, that's great. It's cool. coming out in a few months, Cultivating Your Healing Climate. Mm -hmm. So bring me on after I get the book. Let's do it. You're getting run over by everybody. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> I'm great. We're moving a little slow. Breathe. We'll pick up the speed. Uh, we, we move slow enough because I want you to see this. Well, I just can't very well stand up. What? Look, she can't even hardly stand. <laughs> leave go over, guys. I want to see if she can stand. Just leave go over. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how's your breathing? You came up with COPD, correct? How's your breathing at this moment? Right now, it's great. It's, it's great. great. It's great. And you see a difference. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was singing. You were what? I was singing. You were singing. How great God is. And you couldn't do what that before. What he could do. And you couldn't do that before. And were you from? Oh, you yes, sing? I could sing. But I... I, I, I Get out of I, breath. Yeah. And now you're not. <laughs> you want more. No more. <laughs> I believe it. That's the power of God going through that game. I believe. Is your hernia still there? Yes, sir. How do you know? You had to really look for it, sir. It's not there. I'm healed. In <laughs> Jesus' name. Wow. He can't. Well, he's really. This is going to be a great miracle tomorrow night. We give you such praise, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Faith that worketh by love. Oh, there it is. There it is. He could be healing the eyes first. He could be healing the eyes first. Wow, that's wonderful eyes. Wow. That's 
see. Five. You see five. One, two, three, four, five. Come on and give God a shout. I just feel like there's something that you need to be able to pray for the people. Maybe they're struggling with mm. knowing the word and believing the word mm. and, and understanding. And maybe they, they look at you. I know a lot of our, our followers and our viewers, they go, wow, I, I I want God to use me like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can give them a word of encouragement and pray for them. Yeah, just, let's just believe right now there's something, something amazing. The whole, the whole key to the miracle is the expectation factor. It's not just hearing a prayer, but at the end of that prayer, expecting that that's coming my way. I've received that. To believe with no expectation is unbelief. And that's very, you don't want to go that way. You're hearing prayers, you're around prayers, but you don't expect anything to happen. I'm going to pray and I want you to believe and expect that something's going to begin to manifest. Something's going to begin to change. Some of it now, some of it ongoing. And you will live in the land of the living. Holy Spirit, I thank you and I praise you for all of our wonderful viewers. I thank you for the time they spend in the Word of God, all that they know, all of that knowledge about healing and deliverance and restoration that they know, prosperity that they know. But, oh God, I pray you would quicken that knowledge. Quicken it. Let that logo sink into that spirit. Let it become such a raiment to them. Let a light bulb go on. Pierce their darkness with your light. And let them all of a sudden, Lord, oh, an epiphany, a happening, a, an awakening within each person a hunger like they've never had. Let Ephesians 3.20 become real above what they can even ask or imagine that healing would happen in their body. There'd be change in their physical anatomy. Oh, that they begin to experience this change even right now, even right now, that, the, that what was hopeless would become hopeful and that which was no way would become a sure way. Touch them, I pray, with your healing power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We agree with that. Listen, um, we want to hear from you. If there's, you agree with that prayer, then you're going to start to see some things change in your life. And I want to hear about it. Mm. So just go to our website. There's the information on the screen and contact us and let us know so that we can continue to agree with you in prayer Amen. over revival and awakening and a culture shift right there where you're at. Thanks. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.